Bethel Temple in Rosemead, California. My name is Pastor Larry Tamez, and here with our praise team that comes out and praises the Lord with us and makes that sacrifice. I thank God for everything He's doing in our lives uh, and being and bringing us through the circumstance we're in. Praise God. But we they pray that you get together there, get your Bibles ready, because we will have Sunday school uh, by Brother John. But I'm going to open up with uh, uh, Psalms. 90, uh, Psalms 9, verse 1. Psalms 9, verse 1. Give you a little time to get it. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. Amen. Amen. And that's what we come to do this morning. We're going to praise God. We want you to put all that worry, all that fear, whatever it is, aside and bury it and just don't bring it out anymore. You trust in God. As the praise team sings some songs of praise and lifting to the Most High, and then our brother John will come and give you a Sunday school lesson and as I was looking to it man how it fits right in today how it was already printed about a year ago or more and yet it's falling exactly in the time oh God already knows what's happening he is in control and this is where we need to trust God and I pray that today you just get there with your family and enjoy this service this morning God bless you for
Good morning. God bless you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. I have a, another great lesson, but if you come to Bethel Temple, you'll know that I always say that. <laughs> but uh, today we're going to be still in the book of Daniel, and if you can open your Bibles to Daniel uh, 10, and we're going to be actually reading 10, 11, and 12. So, it's going to be tough, but we'll get through it. Today's title, if you saw it uh, online, it's called End Times Prophetic Panorama. And the subtitle is Through Faith in Christ, Believers Can Stand Courageously for Him in Perilous Times. Yes. Believers can stand courageously for him in, in perilous times. What does the word perilous mean? Uh, to easily say it, it means tough times, really bad times. So uh, we're going to get into it. The key verse is Daniel 12, 2. And it says, Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, Others to shame and everlasting contempt. Mm -hmm. You will make a decision of which group you want to be in. So let's start off with prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you for, yeah. for allowing us to be awake today, Lord. Yeah. We thank you for being uh, able to worship your name yeah. so freely, God. Whether it's here in the church with just a few, Lord, or it's at our home, God. Yeah. Or maybe we're watching from our phone or our car. Wherever we may be, God. We thank you for that opportunity, Lord. We ask you, God, that you will speak to us to this morning, Lord. I pray that I may decrease so that you may increase. I pray that I am an instrument that you use this morning. I pray, Lord, that your word speaks to our hearts, God. And Father, most importantly, God, that we will accept it in our lives, God. That we will apply it to our lives. But Lord, that we will also... Also share it with somebody. We thank you. We praise you. Amen. Amen. I have a question here. And you can answer this to, to yourself. You can type it in if you want. Or I have my few volunteers here. It says, who are some people in the Bible known for making a courageous stand? Name some people in the Bible who were known for making a courageous stand. Abraham. Abraham, okay, who else? Paul. Paul, who else? Jesus. Jesus? <laughs> we can be here all day just after this, right? Daniel. Daniel, right? But look at, let me tell you something, right? The book of Daniel contains two that are widely known. Refusal to bow to the king's golden statue resulted in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being thrown into the fiery furnace. And we've heard our pastor talk about that, right? Mm -hmm. Continuing to pray to God landed Daniel in a den of lions. The final chapters of Daniel describe a final vision that revealed perilous times for God's people. It would take courage for them to stand true for their faith in God. Their courage would be rewarded for God keeps his promises, including the promise of everlasting life. Yes. The title of this section is called Strengthen to Understand the Vision. So here we have, right? Daniel is in, the, in his late 80s, early 90s, and he's, he has another vision. God has given him another vision. And as you know from the previous lessons, that uh, Daniel needed help in interpreting these visions, right? So let me read Daniel 10, 1 through 11. It says, in the, Daniel's vision of a man, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel. Its message was true, and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned, for three weeks, I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched by lips, 
and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. He denied himself. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris River, I looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Uphaz around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. Can you picture that? I can. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Who Those who were there with me did not see but such terror. Overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone. Gazing at this great vision, I had no strength left in, my, in me. My face turned deathly pale and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking, and as I listened to him, I fell to the ground in a deep sleep, my face on the ground. A, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I am about to speak to you, and stand up. For I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Let me read you something. It says, a fourth and final vision given to Daniel by God provided further details of event, events described in earlier visions concerning future conflicts that would affect the Jewish people. In the other uh, lessons, we talked about that judgment was coming for the Jews. And that how things that were happening was because of their disobedience. But we're just, now we're at a time where the Jews are going to be allowed to go back and rebuild the temple. Now listen to this. Daniel had great concern for his people. So he mourned, fasted, and prayed for three weeks. We see that in verse 1, right? He says that he mourned and fasted for the people of God. That kind of sounds like our pastors or our leaders within the church. When they know that there's something going on with their people, when they know that there's something troubling them or the people, they, what? they pray, they fast, and they seek God on our behalf. Yes. You know, and, and I like that part because I know that is true here. Daniel was concerned for his people, so he stood in the gap for them. Yes. Such devotion serves as a powerful example of compassion in action for God's people at a critical and difficult time. You see, the pastors know when something is going on. The leaders know when there is something going on. Whether you tell them or whether it comes by text, or whether someone else tells them, or they can just tell what by when they see your face, or how you react on Facebook. They can tell when something is going on. It, they just know that. I don't know how, but they do. Look at this. At the end of these three weeks, Daniel had a vision of a man by the Tigris River. The Tigris, River is, is, uh, the Tigris River is a major river of the Mesopotamia region, what is now Iraq. It's kind of like the Colorado River. If you're driving from California to Arizona, it's like that wide in most spots, right? Here we go. It says, it is clear through the description of scripture that this man was more than a human being. We're talking about the man that came to visit Daniel. Some say the messenger may have been the angel Gabriel. Others, however, note that the description is similar to that of a glorified Christ. Mm. So there's much debate about that. But can you imagine? Either way, he was visit, visited by someone sent by God. I like Amen. that. Amen. Though not visible to Daniel's companions, this figure struck, struck, struck 
such terror in their hearts that they fled. They couldn't see him, but they knew something was happening, right? I'm going to jump down. The messenger raised Daniel to his hands and knees and provided encouraging words, enabling him to stand. You see, it says right there, right, that he got off of his knees. First, he was on his face, right? He was prostrate on his face. Why? Because that's what you do when you come upon God. When you come before God, if you don't die, you go prostrate to the ground. But what did he do? He had him get to his hands and knees, right? But look at this. He got him up and then gave him encouraging words, right? He got him up. Why? Because there was work to be done. That's why. You know, sometimes we spend time on our knees. But at one point, we have to get up and start doing the work before us. Amen. Whether it's your whether it's your daily chores, whether it's going to work, you have to get up. You got to kick aside whatever is holding you down that's got you on your knees. You have to get up and believe that God will meet your need and do whatever he's got to do. Because why? There is work to be done. Yes. That's why Daniel got up. But I like that part. It says what? He gave him encouraging words to enable him to get up. Yes. Now, when you have someone that you know is going through something and they're on their knees praying, you need to give them encouraging words so that they'll want to get up and proceed yes. forward. Yes. Amen. Because sometimes when people are down, we kick them while they're down. Mm -hmm. Or we say, you deserve this. That's why you're going through what you're going through. Mm -hmm. That's just a little mm -hmm. side note there. I got off the freeway. Let me get no, back on. No, you didn't. <laughs> it says, the central message of this dramatic scene, however, is not found in, in the spectacular events. The messenger instructed Daniel to understand and consider carefully. Listen. Daniel needed to grasp how God was at work in world events so that he could encourage his people in the difficult days ahead. Yes. 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 I think it relates to like what's going on today. God has spoken to us and he said what? Understand and consider what I am about to do. As a believer, we need to listen, we need to understand, and we need to consider what God is doing. Why? So when these times like this happen, we can encourage the people of God. Because let me tell you something. Not everyone is happy. And oh, I love Jesus and I like what's going on right now. I like being locked up in my house. I like not being able to go to church. I like not being able to go to work. I like being not having a job and not getting money. As believers, we need to listen. We need to consider and understand what God has placed us to do for those people in such a time like this. Sister Rochelle. Right here, Brother John, where you said Daniel's work, or I'm sorry, Daniel needed to grasp how God was at work in the world events. Sometimes some of the leaders, or some, I shouldn't say leaders, I, I mean Christians in general, sometimes they don't want to know what's really going on in the world. Oh, you know, I don't bother with politics. I don't bother with this. I don't bother with that. And they need to know what's going on in this world. Right. It's not going to disappear. It's not that it's not important. Yes, we serve God on our daily walk, but yes. we still need to know what is going on in our world, in our neighborhoods, in our yes. government, yes. and people. And, and it's sad because we're in the mess that we are today because of people ignoring what is going on around them. Yes, that's very true. Very it's true. true. We, we do like, a, what, what is it? The, what is it? Is it the ostrich that puts its head in the sand? When it senses danger? Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's just a cartoon. <laughs> but look at this. I don't want to skip this, right? I don't want to skip this. Verse 11. He said to Daniel, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed and consider carefully the words I am about to speak to you. The first part. Daniel, 
you who are highly esteemed. He's given a message to Daniel from God. He's telling Daniel what? God, God loves you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is what he's telling him. He's telling him you are highly esteemed. Which means what? That you are held to a high level. That what? Not, not that. How do I say it? God respects Daniel. Don't take that wrong. Like he needs to. But he says you are highly esteemed by God. That means he has shown favor. Daniel has shown favor. I didn't want to leave that out. But let me ask you a question. How much emphasis do you place on prayer as you seek out ways to, depend, to demonstrate compassion? Let's just cut that up. How much emphasis do you place on prayer? That's the question. I want to see some answers in there. How much emphasis do you pray, place on prayer? Some people don't pray at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The only time they pray and was, is when something is going on. Oh, brother, I pray every day. Lord, thank you for this little robot to eat. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> they don't spend no time on their knees praying to God. They don't spend any time in communication with God. Because the only way you get to know God better is when you communicate with Him. Mm -hmm. Now, brother, I can't get on my knees. Then sit down. Brother, I, I don't have no time at home. Get in your car. Sit in the backyard. Do something, but you need to communicate with God. Because why? You want to achieve what Daniel has achieved. Daniel, you have great esteem with the Lord. Sister Rochelle, then I'm going to move on. I'm sorry. And it's not so much, Lord, give me. Lord, help me. Yes. Lord, give me. Give me. Give me. Give me. It's, I lift you up. I praise you. I thank you. You are honored. That kind of praise to him in communication. Because sometimes we're just a lot of gimme, gimme, gimme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever had that friend that only calls you when they need something? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. I had a guy that used to call me only when he needed his car worked on. I see his own. I said, oh, his car must be broken. <laughs> hey, how's it going, man? Hey, how's it going? Oh, family's great. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm still over here. Yeah, uh-huh. I still work on cars. Uh, yes. Okay, I kind of figured that your car is broken because that's the only time you call me. <laughs> it's okay to call someone. It's okay to talk to God when you don't need something. Yes. Let me move on. The embattled messenger. Daniel 10, 12 through 11, 1. Watch this. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. I'm going to come back to that. It says, But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerns a time yet to come. He's talking to him about uh, uh, future end times, okay? And if you're wondering, I read the easy read version. Here we go. While he was saying this to me, I bowed with my face toward the ground and was speechless. The, then one who looked like a man touched my lips, and I opened my mouth and began to speak. I said to the one standing before me, I am overcome with anguish because of the vision, my Lord, and I feel very weak. How can I, your servant, talk with you, my Lord? My strength is gone, and I can hardly breathe. Again, the one who looked like a man touched me and gave me strength. Do not be afraid. You who are highly esteemed, he said. Peace, be strong now, be strong. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Speak, my Lord, since you have given me strength. So he said, Do you know why I have come to you? Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia, and when I go, the prince of Greece will come. 
But first, I will tell you what is written in the book of truth. No one supports me against them except Michael, your prince. Sorry, right, I got to move over. 12, uh, excuse me, 11, 1. And in the first year of Darius the Mede, I took my stand to support and protect him. So here we are. Daniel is with the messenger of God. Listen to this. The messenger provided Daniel with insight into the spiritual warfare taking place around him. So what's going on with Daniel, what's happening around him, what he's seeing is he is seeing spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare exists. It goes on every day behind the scenes around you. Because Just because you don't see the devil and God, you know, the devil that has a pitchfork tail, a pointy tail and carries a pitchfork, just because you don't see him and God fighting in front of you doesn't mean that they're still battling for you. It's always going on. Listen to this. Oh, I like this part. Remember, I told you I was going to come back. God had heard Daniel's prayers over the past three weeks. As soon as Daniel started praying, God heard him, yes. his prayers. Yes. Something we have to learn here, right? Listen to this. Verses 12 and 13 likely describe demonic forces at work within the Persian government, which ruled over the exiles. Scripture teaches that a demonic hierarchy exists. In Daniel, we see that the archangel Michael had joined in the battle, which allowed the messenger to come to Daniel, though delayed. Remember, we read that he was trying to get to Daniel, but he couldn't get to him because he was delayed, right? But listen, it said that God heard Daniel's prayer from the first day he started praying, but yet the angel didn't get to him until some times later. What does that mean to us? That means God hears your prayer, yes. but sometimes you need to wait for an answer. Yes. Sometimes we have to wait for our answer, but God always hears us. Yes, he does. Yes. Yes. You know, for some people, that's hard to wait. For some people, it's hard to sit there and wait for that answer. Lord, I've been praying for years for this. God, I've been this, I've been that, I've done this for you, God, but I haven't got an answer. Sometimes we're like little kids, the night before Christmas, as they see the presents starting to get around the tree, they cannot wait. Mm. I know I get like that when it's time to go fishing. <laughs> the two weeks before, and I can say my father-in-law can say the same thing, I'm packing my stuff. I'm taking it out of my backpack, organizing it, putting it back in the backpack. Then I take the fishing poles out and I check them out. I lube them. I spray them. I clean them. I put them away. And then two nights later, I take everything out of my backpack, organize it, check it, put it back in. Then I get my fishing poles and do the exact same thing. Amen. And then the night before, I already have everything packed, but I still don't go to bed till like 2 o'clock in the morning. Why? Because I cannot wait. Well, you see, just as anxious we get to go someplace or do something, we get the same way waiting for an answer from God. Yeah. But no, as you wait for that answer, God has heard your request the moment you yes. started Hallelujah. praying for it. Yes. Let me go back. Let me move on. I'm going to jump down to, again, the angel strengthened Daniel with a touch Reminding him that he was loved and esteemed by God. Mm -hmm. Daniel need not be fearful, but find peace and strength from God. You see, those times when we're waiting for that answer, it may become too overwhelming. But know that God has heard you and know that God loves you. Mm -hmm. God always told, tells his people, I love you. And know that God loves you, right? And like Daniel, he held Daniel in high regard. He held Daniel in high esteem, right? God loves you. And because he loves you, he has heard your prayers. 
But you need to trust in him and not be fearful of the circumstance that is going on because yes. God is there with you. Yes. The messenger told Daniel why he had come to reveal what was written in scripture. After delivering this message, he would return to battle alongside Michael for the sake of the Jews. The messenger had been part of this ongoing struggle before when he assisted Darius the Mede. This likely refers to Darius as being favorable, disposed, being favorable, favorably disposed to the Jewish people as they were allowed to return to the land and rebuild the walls and temple at Jerusalem. Now, something that I picked up here, right? The Jewish people, they have God's angels on their side protecting them and battling with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have a special place mm -hmm. in God's heart. Yep. Imagine the people that turn their back on his son still have a special place in God's heart. Yes, yes. Imagine what that means for us being the center of who we are. So don't think that no matter what you've done, that you've done the worst thing ever, that God could never love you or forgive you. But know that he will love you and he will forgive you yes. and he will protect you if you choose to serve him. Let me continue on. I have a question. I'm going to go straight to the question. How has God strengthened you in difficult times? How has God strengthened you in difficult times? One of my lovely people have an answer. <laughs> this side. How? Pastor Rachel. <laughs> Um, there was a time when we were going through some real difficult times. I, I wasn't working at the time. I had just had a child. And my husband came broke, and he, every day he would come home, and he was just broken. And he was he's still preaching and still doing things, but but I couldn't handle that. I, had a, I took it before God. And I said, you know where I'm at right now? I need him to be strong. I need him to, because I... I couldn't go back to work yet. It wasn't my time. And so I poured out my heart to him. And I think, it, in other words, I was asking him, like, give me words to help him, yes. to be strengthened, to be able to face every day. He, he knew what he was facing. I wasn't facing it. He was. But God brought, I mean, I don't know where I got the words from. I, I mean, I, I know it was had to be from him to encourage my husband that he, God was with us even when he felt his weakest. Yes. And so he, he had become kind of like a target at work. And I didn't know what, what was actually going on in, in my husband's uh, mind and in his heart. But I knew it was a great attack. And that's where it's like, as, as women, we need to encourage our husband. We need to stand by yes. him. That when we pray, God hears us. There's a lot of times when, when, when I hear things about women being in ministry and things, but I, I put that aside because it, God hears my prayers, yes. and he heard us, and he brought us through to a place to where it was it was more of a blessing. That whoever we went through looked like it was so dismal, yes. but he gave us the power to get up and to, even though we were trembling and scared, yes, but we still stood on his promise that he was with us. And, yes. and the Holy Spirit somehow gave me words to encourage him. He went out and, and did what I had asked him. What I asked him, I it was I really believe in my heart, it wasn't for me. God he was using me to tell him, yes. like, get up and get strong and go out and look for another job. <laughs> yes, it, 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 I hope you heard her, but I'll summarize a little. She needed to encourage her husband in a troubling time, in a perilous time in his life. She sought God and got the words of encouragement from God, not from her, from God. The Holy Spirit directed her and told her to what? Get up 
and go out there and find another job. God will supply your needs. And I'm sure you've heard the story. The foggy day on whatever street it was. Monterey. Monterey Pass Road. And he went to the wrong building. There was no sign there. And he was hired. And from that day on, that guy helped him. And he was a, a, an assembler. And from that day on, God has met his needs and took care of him. Because one, they sought God in a, in a difficult time. Yes. Let me read you this, and I have it highlighted. Christians can become discouraged as they observe the course of world events if they lose sight of the truth that God is in control. If you have lost the sight that God is in control in this time right now, you are boarded up in your house with a lot of toilet paper and water <laughs> around you because you are in fear. Mm -hmm. But you need to know that God is in control. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Scripture contains many writings about how perilous it will be in the last days. Wow. This is why believers are recommended to watch and pray and find strength in the Lord. The struggle against spiritual forces is real. Yes. And the Lord's help is real as well. Yes, it is. Don't forget that the one who is in you as a believer is greater than the one who is in amen. the world. Amen. Amen. amen, amen, Oh, man, I like that part. Yeah. I could just yeah. stop right there. Yes. But we're not. <laughs> I think I'm going to... Let me read this. God's people shine in darkness... Wars affect God's people. Daniel 2 through 35. Let's see if we can make it. <laughs> the kings of the south and the north. Now then I tell you the truth. Three more kings will arise in Persia. And then a fourth who will be far richer than all the others. When he has gained power by his wealth. He will stir up everyone against the kingdom of Greece. Then a mighty king will arise who will rule with great power and do as he pleases. After he has arisen, his empire will be broken up and parceled out toward the four winds of heaven. It will not go to his descendants, nor will it have the power he exercised, because his empire will be uprooted and given to others. The king of the south will become strong, but one of his commanders will become even stronger than he, and he will rule, rule his own kingdom with great power. After some years, they will become allies. The daughter of the king of the south will go to the king of the north to make an alliance, but she will not retain her power, and he and his powers will not last. In those days, she will be destroyed. Excuse me, she will be, be betrayed together with her royal escort and her father and the one who supported her. One from her family line will arise to take her place. He will attack the forces of the king of the north and enter his fortress. He will fight against them and be victorious. He will also seize their gods, their metal images, and their viable articles in silver and gold and carry them off to Egypt. For some years he will leave the king of the north alone. Then the king of the north will invade the realm of the king of the south, but will treat to his own country. His sons will prepare for war and assemble a great army, which will sweep on like an irresistible flood and carry the battle far as his fortress. Then the king of the south will march out in a rage and fight against the king of the north, who will raise a large army, but it will be defeated. When the army is carried off, the king of the south will be filled with pride will, and will slaughter many thousands, yet he will not remain triumphant. I hope you know what they're talking about. For the king of the north will muster another army larger than the first, and after several years he will advance with a huge army fully equipped. In those times, many will rise against the king of the south. Those who are violent among your own people will rebel in fulfillment of the vision, but without success. Then the king of the, of the north will come and build up siege ramps 
and will capture a fortified city. The forces of the South will be powerless to resist. Even their best troops will not have the strength to stand. The invader will do as he pleases. No one will be able to stand against him. He will establish himself the beautiful land and will have the power to destroy it. He will determine to come with the might of his entire kingdom and will make a give, make alliances with the king of the south and he will give him a daughter in marriage in order to overthrow the kingdom. But his plans will not succeed or help him. Then he will turn to his attention to the coastlands and will make it Will, and will make, will take many of them, but a commander will put an end to his insolence, excuse me, put an end to his insolence and will return his insolence, insolence back on him. After this, he will return back toward the fortress of his own country, but will stumble and fall to be seen no more. His successor will send out a tax collector to maintain the royal splendor in a few years, however, he will be destroyed, yet not in anger or in battle. He will be succeeded by a contemptible, contemptible person who has not been given the honor of royalty. He will invade the kingdom when its people feel secure, and he will seize it through intrigue. Then an overwhelming army will be swept away before him. Both it and the prince of the covenant will be destroyed. After coming to an agreement with him, he will act deceitfully. And with only a few people, he will rise to power. When the richest provinces feel secure, he will invade them and will achieve what neither has fathers, what neither his fathers nor his forefathers did. He will distribute plunder, loot, and wealth among his followers. He will plot the overthrow of the fortress, but only for a time. I'm going to stop right there. Look at this. Let me, let me read something first. The vision revealed future events, focusing on the Persian and Greek empires and how their actions would affect the Jewish people and their homeland. We read about that a few weeks ago. Look at this. Three kings of Persia would come to power between Cyrus and Xerxes. Two of these kingdoms would not affect the course of Jewish history. The Ptolemies Excuse me. Two of these kingdoms would affect the course of the Jewish history. The Ptolemies and the, in Egypt and the Seleucides in Syria. As discussed previously, these two kingdoms controlled Israel until the Maccabean Revolt. If you remember, the Maccabean Revolt is when God's people were allowed to go back and, and build the temple. Beginning in verse 21, the prophetic vision focuses on Antiochus, the fourth Epiphanes, just as we saw previously in Daniel. You see, Antiochus Epiphanes was a bad person. He did not like the Jews. Anytime he had a chance, he would go and mess with them. He'd be going to battle somewhere over here, and he'd go through Jerusalem, and what would he do? He would mess up the temple. He didn't care because he hated the Jews. Right? They called him the madman. What did he do? On the way back, he would mess up the temple again. And he did went so far as to not allow them to make sacrifices in the temple anymore. And I believe he erected a statue of Zeus. Yeah, there it is. He erected a statue of Zeus in the temple. That's how bad this guy was. That time is considered the what? Which was known as the abomination that maketh desolate. Listen to this. Faithful Jews resisted Antiochus and many of them died. Yet Antiochus would be defeated in the Maccabean revolt which allowed the Jews to cleanse the temple and restore their worship and practices. So all of that that we read, we were talking about end times that were shown to Daniel, right? But the good thing is that those things that were done against God's people and the temple were eventually changed and the Jews were allowed to rebuild the temple and to cleanse it 
to restore the worship services. Important thing to remember. It said the faithful Jews resisted Antiochus. We need to be faithful in our service to God. In perilous times, we need to be faithful. Sometimes when things are going on, we turn our back on God. We may, maybe something tragic happened in our life and we said, God, where were you when this happened? Mm -hmm. Or maybe this, when this whole COVID thing started, people have been praying, God, where are you in this time? I have lost my job. My family member has lost life. We're going to lose our home. We're going to lose this. We're going to lose that. But we need to be faithful in God. And yes, some of us will perish. But we need to be faithful in those trying times. Here's a question. How does seeing the historical fulfillment of prophecy affect your faith? That's kind of a hard question. But for me, when you see a prophecy fulfilled, that tells me that God is faithful. Because if you would have heard this at the time of Daniel, you would have been like, no way. That can't, that's not going to happen. You're crazy. But when it actually happened, they changed their tune and said, yes, it happened. But you made that prophecy after it happened because it was so, it was so detailed. But not true. God spoke about this. The messenger of God spoke about this. And it came true almost to the T. Minor, minor details. But let me tell you something. When you see historical fulfillment of prophecy coming true, that tells me that God is faithful. The messages he delivers to his people come to pass. We need to be patient and wait on him. Mm -hmm. A lot of us have been hearing for years that Jesus is coming again. Mm. I remember when Grandpa Johnny used to preach. When Pastor John would preach. I remember he would say, be ready because what? Jesus is coming again. Yeah. We say it every time when we do our, our Holy Communion. My father-in-law leans forward and says, because he's coming again. Be faithful. Hold to the prophecies that Jesus will come again. Yes, he is. Let me go on. Daniel 11, 36 to, through 12, 4. The king will do as he pleases. He will exalt, exalt and magnify himself above every god and will say unheard of things against the god of God. He will be successful in the time, until the time of wrath, until the time of wrath is completed. For that he, ha, for that, excuse me, for what has been determined must take place. He will show no regard for the gods of his ancestors or the one desired by men, by women, nor will he regard any god, but will exalt himself above all. Instead of them, he will honor a god of fortress. A God unknown to his ancestors. He will honor with gold and silver, with precious stones and costly gifts. He will attack the mightiest fortress with the help of a foreign God and greatly honor those who acknowledge him. He will make them rulers over many people and will distribute the land at a price. At the time, at the time of the end, the king of the south will engage him in battle. And the king of the north will storm out against him with chariots and cavalry and a great fleet of ships. He will invade many countries and sweep through them like a flood. He will also invade the beautiful land. Many countries will fall, but Edom, Moab, and the leaders of Ammon will be delivered from his hand. He will extend his power over many countries. Egypt will not escape. He will gain control of the treasures of gold and silver and all the riches of Egypt and with the Libyans and Cushites in submission. But reports from the east and the north will alarm him and he will set out in a great rage to destroy and annihilate many. He will pitch his royal tents between the seas at the beautiful holy mountain, yet he will come to his end and no one will help him. 
12, 1. Excuse me, 12, yeah, 12, 12, 1. At the time, Michael, with the great prince, who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress, such as not happened from the beginning of a nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found, written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who led many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, roll up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go here and there to increase in knowledge. Do you know what they're talking about? If this, is a, this is very interesting, this Bible verse. You need to, uh, I'm praying that you research this when we're done with this. Because I can't, I can't give you everything. But look at this. In Daniel 11.36, the vision jumps ahead to the distant future, pointing to the Antichrist who will rise up during the tribulation period. So what they're talking about is they're talking about the Antichrist and the tribulation period. Brother John, what is the tribulation period? The tribulation period is the seven years. God will come, he will, he will, God will come and, and finish disciplining the Jews, and then also he will judge the unbelieving, godless inhabitants of the earth. Mm. I looked that one up. <laughs> right? The seven year period, right? That's the tribulation. But look at this. He will be king, but when he, he will also profess himself to be a God. We're talking about the Antichrist here. The Antichrist will enjoy success for a time and reward those who work with him. Mm. Wow. He will reward those who work with him. So in other words, if you're left at that time, right, you will be rewarded if you work with the Antichrist. Look at this. He will occupy the Holy Land and dominate many other countries gaining control of their resources, yet he will be opposed. Armies from the east and the north will engage him in a series of battles. Listen, verse 45 speaks of the battle of Armageddon at the end of the great tribulation, right? Uh -huh. The battle of Armageddon. What is the battle of Armageddon? Not the movie, <laughs> right? But it's kind of along the same lines, right? The movie, they thought Earth was going to be destroyed by a big asteroid. Yeah. But the battle of Armageddon is the last battle between the good guy and the bad guy. We'll say between God and his followers and between the Antichrist and his followers. This will be the biggest and last battle to take place on Mount... I can't remember the name... Uh, uh, Armagog, uh, uh, Armagog, some, I'll, I'll find out. Look at this. The Great Tribulation, right? The Great Tribulation is the last three and a half years of the Tribulation. So you have the Tribulation, right? Seven years. And then the Great Tribulation is the last three and a half years. Okay? Look at this. Revelation 19, 7 to 21 describes how Jesus will defeat the Antichrist and his armies. Oh man, I let you know the end of the story. Look at this. Daniel 12, 1 relates how the Archangel Michael will stand up for the Jewish people at this time. Deliverance comes at this time for all whose names are written in the book of Likely referring to the book of life. Is your name in there? Amen. I pray that your name is in there because you know what? I know my name is in there. Is it? Do we really know? Let's go on. End time events include resurrection. The righteous will be raised to experience everlasting life while the wicked will experience everlasting punishment, right? Look at that. Resurrection. The righteous will be raised to experience everlasting life. 
So what does that mean? The dead in Christ will rise. Look at this. The righteous who are part of the first resurrection are described as wise. Those who led others to righteous who lead others to righteousness are said to shine as stars. So if you want to shine as a star, what do you do? You have to lead people to Christ. Mm -hmm. That is part of our job as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We should be out there leading people to Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? It was part of the Great Commission, if you may remember that. Daniel was told to seal the book as it dealt with the end times. However, understanding the vision would come in the last days to those who study the prophetic messages. Passages. Passages, excuse me. So in other words, there will be a test on this on Monday. <laughs> we'll be live and you better be able to answer <laughs> everything that I just spoke about. <laughs> just kidding. How can your faithfulness to God provide a positive testimony of Christ to those around you? How can your faithfulness of God provide positive testimony to those around you? I'm going to ask a few people that I have in here. Brother Joseph, how can your faithfulness to God provide a positive testimony? Uh, uh, just, uh, just the exampleship that we show on a daily basis, you know, just like right now what's going on. You know, if you, if you look at a brother or sister in Christ, if you see them falling apart, it's more of a discouragement rather than a, a, a uplifting. But, uh, you know, just to be here and be with my brothers and sisters and, you know, seeing the comments and everything online that they're, they're saying, it's just an encouragement knowing that, you know, brothers and sisters are standing strong and firm. and just it helps you continue to press on knowing that you're not alone. You know, you're not in this uh, spiritual warfare or in this battle by yourself. Amen. We're going, we're doing this all together as one. And it's just, a, it's just it's uplifting. Awesome. Amen. Amen. How can your faithfulness to God provide a positive testimony of Christ to those around you? Uh, Pastor Larry, you want to answer that? Well, um, right now is a big test of our lives of faithfulness because our neighbors, our friends, our co-workers, those that are still working, uh, relatives that, that know that you talk to them about the Lord, they're looking at us and looking at how we handle this situation. Are we falling apart? Are we discouraged? Or are they looking at us? And if we show strength and trust, it's kind of like the rubber meeting the road. Yes, sir. If we're doing, right now, the rubber is meeting the road on the true believer if he stands firm because we are being watched. Yes, yes. Yes, very true. Listen to this. It says, God's word clearly describes the benefits and consequences of our choices. Wise living is righteous living. This means surrendering to God to become his child through faith in Christ, then obeying his commands. Christians not only have the benefit of of being children of God, they also have the responsibility to tell others about Christ. If you have accepted Christ, you in turn will also shine in the darkness. Yeah. I don't know if you've, uh, you probably never ever heard my father-in-law or my pastor sing that song, This Little Light of Mine. <laughs> I'm going to let it shine, right? You will be the bright, the shining in the darkness for those around you that are lost. So let your light shine and what witness to those people that ha do not know God. Let me finish up here. The time of end, God's redemptive purpose. Daniel 12, 5 through 10. Then Daniel, I looked, and there before me stood two others, one on this bank of the river and one on the opposite bank. One of them said to the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river, How long will it be before these astonishing things are fulfilled? The man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river lifted his hand and his left hand 
toward heaven, and I heard him swear by him who lives forever, saying, It will be for a time, times and a half a time. When the power of the holy people has been finally broken, all these things will be completed. I heard, but I did not understand. So I asked, my Lord, what will be the outcome of all of this? He replied, go your way, Daniel, because the words are rolled up and sealed until the time of the end. Many will be purified, made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand but those who are wise will understand. Now, when Daniel first, in verse 8, when he said, I heard, but I do not understand. Maybe some of us are like that this morning. I heard, but I don't understand. Look at this. I'm going to jump right to the explanation here. It says, Daniel could not understand these things. They would stay secret until end times. Yet, listen, yet he was to stay faithful to the Lord despite his inability to understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I say you just read all of this, you were through all of these uh, lessons with us as we started the book of Daniel. Maybe you're reading the book of Daniel on your own. Maybe you're watching videos like I did too. Maybe you're doing all this and you still don't understand. But let me tell you something. Whether you understand the great tribulation, the tribulation, the battle of Armageddon, whether you understand the person standing on the bank, it, it doesn't mean anything. What you need to remain faithful, even if you don't understand. Yeah. Yes, amen. I wish I could be like the people that I see on TV. Oh my gosh, some of the people that I watch, you know, they just know the word. They just know it front of, they start quoting Bible verses, they know where to put it in their, in their message, in their lesson. I'm not like that. I have to research and I have to study and I have to try to remember it. But let me tell you something. It tells me right here that it's okay if I don't understand it. I just need to remain faithful yes. unto the Lord. Yes. Let me continue reading. Let me finish this up for reals. Faithfulness needed. Daniel 12, 11 and 13. 11 through 13. Yeah, you should have finished that. Oh, let me back up. My audience is saying I need to keep reading that. Let me start again. Yet he was, stay, he was to stay faithful to the Lord despite his inability to understand. Listen, he could trust God to fulfill what had been foretold. Uh -huh. God's purpose in all of this was to bring many people to redemption. Those who are wise will turn to God, uh -huh. yet others will continue in their wicked ways despite the horrific events yes. of the yes. end times. Yes. Sorry, I almost forgot. I almost left you guys out. <laughs> Someone got that. You see, people, wicked people will be wicked people. Yeah. Some of them will accept the Lord. Some of them will listen to what we are saying today. Some of them will listen to your prayers and your messages to them. But let me tell you, sadly, some of them will continue to remain wicked. But know this, know this, there will be no excuse for anyone when it becomes time for judgment day. Because all will have heard God's word at one point or another. There will be no excuse to say, but I didn't know. Know this, mark my words, all 29 of you that are out there watching, know this. That we have been warned. Know this. The people you are praying for. Some will remain wicked. But yet others will turn to God. Nice. So we need to keep 
witnessing for God. Because why? He wants none should perish. Rochelle, and then I'll move on. You know, he's given us all, he's given the world, really, the opportunity to turn to Christ. Yes. He's closed all the clubs, uh, all the bars, uh, all the activities, every excuse that we have ever given to why we cannot serve, seek God. He's taken that away. He's taken away all our excuses. Yes. There's no excuse for us not to turn to God. Or that we didn't hear it. It's on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, chat, chat, whatever those things are. I don't even know all those things. But it is on every single, there is no way that you have not heard who Christ is. Or, or it doesn't matter. You can, you cannot put on the blinders anymore. I didn't know. You didn't tell me. That's sometimes we hear that from our kids. Oh, I didn't know. You can tell him over and over again. Oh, I didn't know. There is no excuse. I didn't have enough time. My job was, it was too overwhelming for me. Yes. No, there's, I, I was in school. I couldn't because of school. There is no excuse. No excuse. Those who are wise will turn to God, yet others will continue in their wicked ways, despite the horrific events of the end times. Faithfulness needed. Daniel 11, excuse me, 12, 11, and 13. 11 through 13. I think I did that last time. From the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. Blessed is the one who waits for and reaches the end of the 1,335 days. As you go your way till the end, you will rest, and then at the end of the days, you will rise to your to receive your allotted inheritance. You may have noticed that the math is off a little there. There's no explanation of why that math is off. But look at this. In Daniel 12, 11, the man clothed in linen, linen continued with a statement that seems to fit best in the middle of the tribulation. He spoke of the daily temple sacrifices being stopped and the setting up of the abomination of desolation, which other passages indicate will take place three and a half years into the tribulation. The rest of the tribulation, when the Jewish people are openly attacked by the Antichrist, will last three and a half years. The man clothed in linen then described those Jews who would survive for the 1,335 days as being blessed. This may refer to those who stay true to God through the tribulation and get to see the, establish, the establishment of the reign of Jesus in his millennial kingdom. Following this vision, the book of Daniel closes on a positive note of encouragement for Daniel to remain faithful. Though the world, though he would die before his visions would come to pass, he could trust in God's promises of resurrection and everlasting life. Yes. Let me read this last part as I close. Understanding the details of how prophetic events will play out is not essential to an inheriting the promises of God. However, God does require that we remain faithful to Him, recognizing that He works through world events to complete His redemptive plan. Take a moment to examine your life. What might lead you toward unfaithfulness? And how can you deal with such challenges? Last part. God gave Daniel visions to provide insight into how he works in history to complete his plan of redemption. The prophecies remind us that the last days will be perilous times. The spirit of Antichrist is already at work in this world. Rather than cower in fear, or compromise our beliefs, 
we can stand courageously for Him. By His grace, we can live godly in an ungodly yes. world. Yes, yes. Amen. I know that was a lot to grasp. I know that was a lot to grasp. But take time to read through the book of Daniel. Get a Bible concordance and look up the different passages but also look at videos that are online like YouTube. There's great speakers out there that's, that explain this way better than I do. But let me tell you something. A couple things that I got from this. Understanding the details of how prophetic events will play out is not essential in inheriting the promises of God. Yeah. However, we need to be faithful to God no matter what we go through. Mm -hmm. If anything that you gain out of this is that you need to remain faithful yes. to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, I thank you for using me this morning, Lord. Lord, it may be confusing to some, Lord. It was confusing to myself, God. But Lord, I know your Holy Spirit spoke to us, Lord. I pray that the message that was received, God, that we need to be faithful unto you, no matter what we go through is received, God. I pray, Lord, that you continue to speak to us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you continue to use us, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that we will share the gospel with somebody. Father, I thank you, Lord, and I praise you for all that you do and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen.
Uh, we'll see you back here in about an hour. Pastor Larry will be bringing his word and we'll be live streaming again on, YouTube, on Facebook or on uh, Instagram. So we'll see you then and God bless.